We have a fantastic tutorial for you today where we're off to the moon's surface. So grab your favourite brew, suit up and get ready for launch. First up, if you'd rather just download the project file that is available on my Patreon, so head on over there. If not, follow along and let's get started. So we're in Cinema 4D. We're going to begin with creating a plane, so go up to plane. We need this quite large, we're going to do about 20,000 by 20,000, 200 segments on both sides. We're going to add a displacer to start with, if I can find it, there it is. Make that a child of the plane and add a noise as the shader. Change the noise mode to Voronoi 1 and we are going to be creating the dents. So make the scale a bit smaller and we're going to play around with the brightness and contrast values now to try and boost out the contrast and make the dent value a bit stronger. If we go into the object settings we can make this height a bit, sh a bit higher. Yeah about 100 is great but we need subdivision surface. There we go, look at that, a block of cheese. So let's rename this displacer to small craters and we're going to duplicate that by holding control and dragging it above itself. So it's still in the same hierarchy. And then let's rename that one to small crater detail which is going to be using this again just a little bit smaller so let's reduce the height to 50 and that's pretty good. So let's duplicate it again holding control in the object let's make the strength a bit weaker go to about 50 and rename this the shallow craters. And then back in the object noise type, we're going to change the seed so they're not in the same place. Change the scale right up to about 5,000. So these are going to be large ones. And then we're going to play with the clip values. As you can see, it's starting to create craters in the areas. And they're a bit larger than the smaller ones. Now, this is a bit of eyeballing. So just do what you think looks nice for your scene. I'm just playing around here. I quite like this. So let's duplicate that displacer again and we're going to redo this one up to 100 strength with a height of 110 centimeters. We are going to change the name of this one to Deep Craters. As you can see we're just layering up all these displacements and what that allows us to do is fine-tune each part of it and we're going in the Deep Craters and changing the brightness and contrast Again, eyeball it, see what you like. I'm finding that I quite like the softer look of the craters coming down, but you might like that sharper feeling. We're gonna rename the subdivision surface to lunar surface, just so we keep it tidy. And we are going to insert a landscape object. So once we have put that in, we're gonna make this one very large again, make this one 25,000 by 25,000 with a height of 2,000 and we're just going to position this in the background. This is just going to give us that kind of lunar mountain look um, and you can just eyeball this once again, just duplicate by holding control and dragging around, change the sizes of them. I'm actually going to make these a lot bigger, I don't think 25,000 is enough so we're going to double that to 50,000. As you're probably aware, it's very good to try and work with as close to real size as possible. We're building the lunar surface, which is a large area, so it's better to work with large numbers. Just making this one higher again, also moving this up to 50,000 by 50,000. And there we go, and moving it around again. So once we've positioned those, we can duplicate the displacers, selecting one, holding control, dragging it on top of the landscapes. As you can see, this has given it fine detail again with the craters, just like the ones we've got here. You can add the smaller craters if you would like. I'm not doing that here as I want the detail to be in the foreground. So now it's time to boot up Octane and this is where the magic happens. So let's add in the sun and Let's also add in a texture environment. We want this black but not completely black, so let's put it to 0.1. And there we go. We can now work on the settings of the sun. But if we mix the sky texture, there we go, we can see that the uh, texture environment's coming in. Again, let's make the sky color black since we're in space, but not completely black, so 0.1 is fine. And then we are going to rotate this to give us some nice shadows. Again, you can copy my values or you can see which looks nice on your scene. If you've got to use different seeds for the displacers, you're going to have a different looking surface, so different shadows might work well. 
We're going to change the sun color down, not so saturated, and then we're going to put the power to 2 and the intensity to 3 for now. Right, and now let's add in a material. And this is going to be our lunar surface. So if you download this, which is on Quixel Bridge, it's a free texture. Download that, and once you've got it, open up the folder that you've downloaded to and drag it over into our node editor like I have here. We are now dragging the maps into the correct areas. So we've got the roughness, the normal, the displacement and the albedo. So we are just dragging all of those in. Generate a displacement and we want to set this to um, so let's put the displacement to a height of 12 and the mid-level to 0.5. Um, I have accidentally clicked it, 0.5, there we go. And we put the detail up to 8K since I downloaded the 8K textures. If you downloaded the 4K, put this as 4K. And now let's drag that onto our lunar surface and let the magic happen. Great, it looks like chalk. So we're going to add in a color corrector and we are going to drop the saturation to 0.7 and the gain to 0.8. Fantastic. This is looking good. And let's change our render settings. I've got path tracing with 1024 samples. Bring the highlight compression right up to one. And I'm going to use this response light, which looks good. And you can see here that the black uh, bars are interfering with the look of this um, so I need to switch those off by pressing this padlock button and showing us the full screen. Great. Um, now on the lunar surface texture tab we are going to tile this a little bit to get a bit more detail make it a bit smaller so I'm put it to three. Let's have a look at three once it loads. Uh, that's looking pretty good and I'm going to keep it at that. Again, just do what looks good for your scene. I'm just giving you the rough idea of how to create this. I'm gonna bring the height right up. So 70 is looking good. And then let's duplicate this texture tag across our landscapes. And because they're further away, we want less detail. Um, so we're gonna tile those to about four so that they have smaller pebbles. Great. Back into the daylight tag, we are going to rotate this again. I don't have enough shadows in my scene to really see the detail yet, so I'm just playing around with these values here. There's the shadows, lovely. That is looking crispy, I love it. And the sun is a little bit too orange, let's drop that color down a bit. Nothing's going to be completely white, so we'll have a little bit of orange and blue in there. Now, it's easy to think that we are using the sun that you would need it to be large in the sky, right? Because the sun's huge. But if you think about where we are in space, we actually need to make this sun small. As you can see at the moment, the shadows are very diffused and that is because our sun size is, is set to one. So if we drop that now to 0 0.1, you can see that the shadows are crispier. And that is what we need to do. And now we're gonna play around with the power Play around the intensity and find what looks good for you. So mine's about five and four now, and I'm very happy with that result. Just play around with the rotation, find a nice shadow length. I think that's quite nice for mine. Um, you may have noticed we're not putting any stars in the, um, the sky as well, because you don't generally see them in space. So we're going to duplicate this landscape again. I felt like it was too flat and I'm just going to raise the height of this in the middle, just to give it a bit of central focus. And I'm going to drop this landscape into a subdivision surface to give it a bit more smoother detail. And now we're going to add in an octane scatter. And this is going to be for some lunar rocks. And if we go back to Quixel Bridge, you can download this free rock asset. So download it and import it into your scene once it has downloaded. I'm going to drag mine in. It might open in a new scene, so just copy and paste it into this one if it does. So once that's downloaded into your folder, bring it over, drag it in and import it. I've imported the LOD1 level of detail 1 asset and I'm going to drag this into my Octane Scatter node. I have put the lunar surface material onto this rock, but we will be changing that. For now, let's change the distribution type to surface and drop our plane from the lunar surface into here. 
Now this is looking very cool, not so realistic, but very cool. So let's make a new material, and this is going to be our rock material. So you would have got the materials in that folder, so drag those in from where you've just downloaded the rock asset to, and we're going to pipe in these nodes to their correct partners. So we've got the normal node, just making it a bit bigger here. I'm pumping in the displacement map into the bump map because we don't need to waste resources on our GPU for displacement since these are going to be so small. So we will just get a bounced light through the bump map instead. I might just put a color correction node on here and just drop the saturation again because we don't have much color on the moon. It's fantastic, let's drop that on and let's see how that looks. Great, that looks much better with that material. So we are now going to start art directing this. So let's dr drag in a random node from the MoGraph and let's add some rotation so that all of these rocks are randomly rotated so they don't look duplicated. And then set a uniform scale of 0.5 so that it scales equally from all sides. And then head into the effectors menu and drop the random node in. Great, you can see that these are now different sizes, different rotations, and we now need to make them a lot smaller and a lot less. So let's put the count to 500 and let's drop in the scale a noise shader. And as you can see, they are now being distributed randomly and their size is random based on the color values of the luminance in the noise with uh, white being a size of one and black being a size of zero. And this does this randomly across the whole map. We're getting close to the finished result. So I'm going to now duplicate this octane scatter node twice. So drag it up by holding control. And we've got two of those. And then in each one, we're gonna put landscape one and landscape into the other one. And that has put some rocks across the back landscapes. And I'm just going to bring the scale down of these since they're so far back. I'm just going to drop it to 0.5 so they're less prominent in the frame. And that is looking good. So I'm going to show you how to art direct Octane scatter nodes using vertex maps. So if you go onto your lunar surface, and we're going to connect the objects to flatten these hierarchy down into one object because we want to be editing the uh, polygon faces. So we can now switch off the lunar surface and hide it and a backup in case we ever need to change it. We can then change the displacing nodes again. So let's select the faces, go into polygon edit mode faces, right click and search for vertex. And then in other tags, we want the vertex tag. And here I'm putting in an octane camera so we can save that position we were at. And let's have a look how we can do this. So if we click the vertex tag, whilst on the lunar surface object and on polygon faces mode it goes red. We can now paint exactly where we want the cloned scatter to be. Um, it might be a bit laggy because these are quite high dense meshes now that we've flattened it down but this is where you can really play with where you want the rocks. Um, so I'm going to put some in the foreground here. I'm just renaming this to main so we know that that's the one we want. We can delete this other vertex map that was created and then in that main one, we want to drop that vertex map down into the vertex map object. Okay, that looks like a bug. Yep, just change the count if that happens to you and drop it back to 500. And yeah, now that we can see that's doing what we want to do, we can live paint these rocks in. And I'm now going to just make a bird's eye view camera because I think we're pretty much there now. Um, let's have a look how this looks from above. I'm pretty happy. I do think these smaller dents in the craters are very smooth. They look like a cannonball's hit it rather than an asteroid. So we're going to add another displacement on top and add another noise again. We want a little bit of contrast on here just to kind of roughen up the edges of those smaller craters. Let's increase the global scale to about 500% here. And have a look how that looks. That looks pretty good. That's given us the larger kind of a displacement. And let's duplicate that again by holding control and make this smaller, really small. Let's put this on about 25 to get that really fine detail. And let's bring the height down from 10 to 2. 
There we go, I think that looks great. So let's go back to this one here and there we go. This is the finished result. I hope you're happy with it. This was my first tutorial in about five years, I think. I've got a lot of tips I want to give you guys and I just need your support to allow me to do that. So if you're new here to Moormogsy, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.